actually, I got my blonde hair showing today, so who cares? But <laughs> no, hey, no, but this is all count. And this is not a spring chicken. We're going to talk today about something you wouldn't expect. See, here's part of it is, oh, actually, should we tell them what we're talking about? Well, I just, um, uh, I, it's got to do with the fact that, uh, you know, she's been, really been, like, this is about, Five months. We're into five months of her being sick. Is it five? No, it's since March. Um, uh, no, February. Is it February? Yeah, February, March, April, May, June. Five months because. Oh, uh -huh, I feel fine. Yeah, uh, and uh, no, but see, what happens is um, how it affects your career. See, her. Um, my father was an actor, mm -hmm. and you know he was a stunt person, actor. Mostly, he did uh, second unit stuff, which meant he always had to be in fairly decent shape. Because he, he couldn't have a sick day here, stuntman. Well, see, here's the challenge: is a lot of people have eight to five jobs, yeah. and if they get sick, they get sick. They don't want to get sick, but they get sick, and they take the medication, and then they still go to work. Yeah. But here's one of the things: this year we've had a particular challenge um, because I've been sick on and off, and it's not just me. A lot of the industry have been sick. Oh, it's been because it goes around because. You go to industry events, one of them is sick, and they pass on. We know people that basically have not worked and totally have not done anything in months because of things. I mean, you know, well, why should that affect people? See, here's part of it is that you don't think about is as an actor, because I've, I've seen friends, is anytime they show up for an event, I told them, if you're an actor and you're there as talent, right, typically you're going because they're going to photograph you, what yeah. event you want to. But if you're an actor, you have to expect that somebody will take a picture of you. Yeah. Okay? Which means you need to be camera ready. You have to be camera ready. Uh, you know, and, and you have to be, okay, uh, even though, for instance, I spent most of my career as a floater, which means uh, what happened was because my mother, my grandmother was a script supervisor, my father was a second unit man, um, actors are god awful unreliable. If they, can, if they find a better role the same day they're supposed to be doing a lesser role, they will actually not show up. And what will happen, they would say, can that kid of yours, you know, hey, Will, Will, can that kid of yours, um, you know, ride this? And oh, yeah. Can he drive us? Oh, yeah. My grandmother. You know, can he sing? Yeah. Can he dance? Oh, God, he dances like Fred Astaire. Who? Actually, I didn't learn to dance from someone. So. But um, the problem was, was that... <clears throat> I wasn't a full-time performer, and I had brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And what would happen is my brothers and sisters would get sick. And I would, um, I'd, I'd show up um, for like one of the surf and sand pictures. Um, I'm supposed to be doing background to, <clears throat> to anything. And basically, we were actually recording, we'd record the music first, and then we'd come and sing the music. And we did like one of the things, you know, like, You'd be, um, I'm, I'm, I tend to be, I'm, I, I basically I have a multi-octave range, but I tend to be tenor, mostly, so I would be doing that. And I'd come in, and uh, my voice would be down like this, and I'd go, that's not how you sounded before. And I said, my sister has a cold. They said, oh, crap. Mm -hmm. You know, and they say, um, can you fake it? And I'd go, oh, yes, I can fake it. You know, I go up to tenor, but I could get away with it. But then I can't get away with the speaking, though. Well, see, part of it is, for example, this this is what most people have a connection with. You probably watch the news periodically, right? Yeah. And your your local newscasters are on camera every single day. Yeah. So wouldn't you notice that if they had a red nose and they were sneezing on air? Yeah. And they they don't do that. That you can't you don't see them congested mm -hmm. because uh, mo okay. On-the-air personalities live by two things. One, their looks, and second, their voice. Right. And so, they can't have either one of them out of whack. And see, part of it is, and as we've had this challenge, because I, I've talked to different people, they're like, well, you know, you're in a bikini. I'm like, yeah, I says, but I says, I have to be able to be in a bikini every single day on camera. Yeah. And all of a sudden, they look at me like, oh, my gosh. It's just like they know what that means. Yeah, right? because, I mean, we will flat, I absolutely will flat out not film days yeah. when she is totally, I mean, um, she has, okay, I knew, okay, when I was younger, I mean, most of the camera in Hollywood used to adore Sid Charisse because, I mean, they, <clears throat> I mean, she looked gorgeous on camera. The camera went all love for photographing her. 
And um, so, <clears throat> but she'd have bad days. And they said, oh, hell, I can't put that woman on camera today because she looks like my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, that, and then, you know, <clears throat> because she'd been in the business for a long time, she knew that it was just more than the fact that she was a great dancer. She was also oh. the best looking dancer. Mm -hmm. And she always wore less. And because she wore less, she had to always look great wearing less if it didn't happen. You can see, uh, an example, you know, an uh, example, of, there was a movie that she did where in the movie she's wearing long pants, short skirt, long pants, short, that's the same dance sequence. Why? Because they, uh, they, they didn't work right in the skirt, when she was wearing a skirt and she came back and she was, not, she was sick. Oh, that would happen. And basically, because she was sick, she was, you know, oh. and basically, she couldn't, she was known for her proper stance, because she was a ballet dancer, everything was prim and proper, but if she was sick, it would, so she could basically, you know, do the smiling, do the dancing, but guess what was hanging over her? Oh. Out. So she was wearing, she would go, she would, she would dancing in the part of it, wearing a skirt, short skirt, shows lots of leg, and then all of a sudden, you know, in the in the makeup scene, she's got on pants that are hiding the fact that she's. You know. See, because part here's here's part of it as an actor. It's like everything's ready to go on set. Here, this is what you're filming that day, yeah. right? Yeah. And you wait. It's your turn to go on. You do your performance. Then it's the, the next yeah. people. But everybody's got to be ready to go on. You need to look a certain way. Their makeup and all of that. No. I mean, I've um, I um, I did something once with. Um, I was in, a, you know, a Joel McRae Western, and Joel McRae, his kids had the measles. Oh, no. Because his kids went to school with all the other kids, because McRae was, he was, he was what he was. He just was an ordinary person that happened to become, he was a cowboy that became a star. He liked being a cowboy, but his kids were, ever, you know, Jody McRae was in the beach party, he was big, you know, he was the only person bigger than me in the movies. So, but uh, they, had, they were sick, and he came in, and, uh, and he, they said, uh, can you not do that on camera? And he said, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's not like, you know, uh, he's a star. And, you, and there's no budget. When there's no budget, you can't work around. So what they would do, I mean, they, um, what she has right here is something that we created basically for her throat. So I have to open a bit. So I don't know if there, but because you know, her drops. We, we made these ourselves, which you haven't seen yet, that little piece, but, um, which is coming up. But then we would be, they were feeding him honey and tea, just honey. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking, they could have just poured it down so that, you know, okay, now somebody put the makeup on him. Okay, Joel, you've got to come riding in on your horse, jump off your horse, and uh, and draw your gun out. And he go, oh, and they, and they okay, Craig, we're, you know, we're depending upon you. And he, he, uh, you know, he got up on his horse. Action! He, goes, <laughs> he jumps off his horse, fires the gun, and goes, "Oh crap!" And, and they, yeah, that was that's being an actor. That's like, why even older actors like they come off stage and they're like this, but they go on stage and they're like, "Oh God!" Because, right? Because the show must go I mean, on. You know, and it's just like um, when she lost her voice. I don't do on camera stuff. I really. I am not on camera that much. Well, see, part of it, that was the challenging part is because if you've been watching this, you saw, you knew that my voice was gone, and so I've been drinking tea, and I've had these things to suck on. But see, a lot of times, I mean, we have to because we're on every single day. Yeah. Um, and we did as much as as much as we could, but a lot of times, it's like you don't have that choice. Yeah, no, you don't have the choice, yeah, because I said, um, I, had, I had to be on no map because she couldn't speak. We're, yeah. we're doing, like... 14 hours of 3D material a week. And that doesn't count with the stuff that she's doing besides. Well, and part of it is I'd go to different things and they're going like, well, what happened to your voice? You can't talk. And well, see, part of it was not only the evening events because I told, I said, look, I said, I was on camera for two hours talking earlier. I said, I don't have much of a voice now. Mm -hmm. I was wrapping up and something like, I'm sorry, I can't do a red carpet outside. Right. And people were going like, what? And so I'd have other people that would help me, but I was not, I was wrapping my throat, I wasn't outside, because see, sometimes you're outside, like, I will tell you, they did interviews on the, the carpet for the Black Eyed Peas Peapod Benefit concert, which sounds 
really cool. Actually, it was really cool, and we were fortunate to get in the concert, which I was really happy about. But we were outside for four hours, yeah. and let me just say, of course, they had just come back from the Super Bowl in Texas where it was snowing, but it was cold enough that my toes were frozen outside on the carpet. The guy that was with me, we were wearing coats on the carpet. Um, he basically said, uh, it's so cold out here, my nipples are shaving yeah. <laughs> against my shirt. Yeah, I know that. It's just um, <laughs> it's a funny thing, too. Uh, it's about, you know, uh, how that can affect a male. Because um, uh, we were doing, um, doing an episode of combat, and Rick Jason, who played Lieutenant Hanley, you know, he was you know really athletic guy, and he had this nice, beautiful baritone. He was a he was Shakespearean actor. He had this nice baritone voice, and it, where we were at, I think we were shooting in Big Bear, where it was cold as hell, and uh, and I think you know my father, my father grew up with one of the guys, Dick Peabody, who played Little John, and and, and Dick. He told my father, he said, uh, he said, Jason, he said, did you remember to bring, and he said, no. He said, then you're going to freeze them off today. Mm -hmm. And he's out there, and it got cold. I mean, it's really cold. Well, and, and, he, and all of a sudden, his voice starts changing on camera because it has an effect on the <laughs>